All right, let's go on to the second problem. ISP here provides 172.23.96.0 slash 20. Now, once again, these problems are for exercises. Don't get too concerned about the fact that we're using a private IP address, something that our ISP would never give us. I'm using that private IP address so that we don't use public IP addresses that other people are using. So we can divide up these addresses just as well as any other address. The, the number is, is really irrelevant. We've just defined as engineers that 172.16 through 172.31 is private IP space, just as the 10.000 space and the 192.168.00 address space. At any rate, here's our host requirements. So we need several networks with 200 to 250 hosts on them, a couple of them at 100 hosts, one with 750 hosts. Why would we need a 750 host network? That's, that's really a lot of hosts on a network. Typically, with, with, when we're using ARP, we really don't want our networks to grow much beyond 500 hosts or so. 750 is pushing it. But we can actually do it when we're using a system like a lightweight wireless system where we have a very solid mechanism of reducing where our broadcast traffic can propagate. So when we have a mechanism like a lightweight wireless controller system, we can actually reduce the number of broadcasts we need to to very, very, very minimal number. We can actually increase the number of hosts on it. So oftentimes on wireless networks, you'll see much more than 250 or 500 hosts per network. So let's assume our 750 host network there is a wireless network. We also have a 500 host network here. So let's break this apart. We'll solve the problem. First thing we're going to do, find out what our range is. So we have 12 bits to modify, and the range of addresses goes from 172.23.96.0 through 172.23.111.255. We have 12 bits to modify. So let's build our chart then with our host requirements in it. So we start at the top with 750, we go down to 500, then our 250s and our 200, 100, and then our 2s for our networks that link our routers together. We then are going to calculate the number of bits required. I had to make the chart a little bit bigger here to accommodate for 750 hosts per network. To get that, we need 10 bits. Then to get 500 hosts per network, we need 9 bits. To get 200 to 250 hosts per network, we need 8 bits. To get 125, we need 7 bits, or 100, I don't recall what that was, it was between 100 and 125, and then the rest of them we need 2 bits. So we fill those values in, in our table here, I guess it was 100 hosts per network that we needed, which was 7 bits in the host portion. Once we have our table filled in with all the bits, we can then begin calculating our network addresses, starting with 750 hosts per network, with 10 bits in the host portion. So, we write down our given address here, 172.23.96.0 slash 20. We calculate our new mask, where we put 10 bits in the host portion. Here we have 8, 9, 10 bits in the host portion. We fill the rest up with 1s in our subnet mask. We then can bring down our network address. This time, instead of slash 20, it's going to be slash 22. We find out what our first host, our last host, and our broadcast is. We add 1 tells us our next available network, and then we can fill in our chart after we convert it to decimal. We then go ahead and find out what the host requirements are going to be for 9 bits in the host portion to accommodate 500 hosts. So, once again, we start with our next available network. We find out what our new mask is. This time we need 9 bits in our host portion. We add 3 bits to our network portion. We calculate our network address, first host, last host, and broadcast, add one to the broadcast, convert it to decimal, and fill in our chart. That leaves us with 172.23.102.0 as our next available address, and we know here we need 8 bits in our host portion. So, we put 8 bits in our host portion, find out what our new mask is, this time it's a slash 24 mask. We bring down our next available network, which is 172.23.102.0, this time with a slash 24 mask. 
We find out what the first host, the last host, and the broadcast is. Add one to the broadcast, and it gives us our next available network. Alrighty, we convert that to decimal now. Put it back in our chart, and go through the process again. Rinse, wash, repeat. Alright, uh, we need a 24-bit mask again. Take 172, 23.103.0, find out what the first host, last host, and broadcast address are with a slash 24 mask. Add one to the broadcast address, and we get our next available network. Convert that to decimal, fill in our chart. Next available address, 172, 23.104.0. Go back to our binary, calculate our mask with 8 bits in the host portion, which is a slash 24. Find out our first host, our last host, and the broadcast. Add one to our broadcast to get our next available network. And we're now at 172.23.105.0. Go back to our binary. Still need 8 bits in our host portion to accommodate 200 hosts. So we're still at a slash 24 mask. Calculate once again our network address. First host, last host, and our broadcast address. Add one to our broadcast address to get our next available network. Convert that to decimal and fill in our chart. Now you could be saying, but Ross, now with a slash 24 mask, the numbers are counting up one at a time in the third octet. So we went from 172.23.102.0 slash 24 to dot 103 to dot 104 to dot 105.106. So why are you wasting all your time in the binary? Well, I'm wasting all my time doing it in binary because it's actually not a waste of time long term. The better you know the binary, the better you can do route summarization. The better you can do route summarization, the better you understand how wildcard masks work, and the better your abilities are going to be when we do access control lists. And we actually need to select ranges of IP addresses to filter. So. The big advantage here is to break it down to binary all the time because you get experience working with the numbers in binary. Understanding these IP addresses is really fundamental. So, all right, moving on here. We're at 172.23.106.0. This time we need seven bits in the host portion. So we go back to our binary. We put seven bits in our host portion. We fill the rest of our mask with ones. This time our mask is a slash 25. We find out what our first host, last host, and broadcast is. Add one to our broadcast, and now that tells us our next available network. Convert it to decimal. Fill in our table here. 172.23.106.128 is my next available network. I once again need to have seven bits in the host portion. So I calculate my mask here. Take my next available network. Find out the first host, last host, and broadcast address with a slash 25 mask. Add one to my broadcast. Find out my next available network. Convert that to decimal. And now, fill in our table. We're now at 172.23.107.0. Now, these are all our slash 30 networks with two bits in the host portion. So what we should find here is that it should go 172.23.107.0. Our next one should be 172.23.107.4, then .8, then .12. So we should see 4, 8, 12, and then 16 as our last network here. Let's see if it works out that way. We create our slash 30 mask, find out what our first, second addresses are, and then the broadcast address. We add one to the broadcast address that tells us our next network, convert that to decimal, and sure enough, it's 172.23.107.4. Rinse, wash, repeat. 30-bit mask again. Find our network, first, last, addresses, the broadcast address, add one to the broadcast address, tells us our next available network, fill in our chart, sure enough, it is .8. Rinse, wash, repeat. Right, we got uh, very clean hair today. Calculate our 30-bit mask again. Find out what our first and last hosts are. Find out our broadcast. Add one to the broadcast. Convert it to decimal. Sure enough, it's dot 12. Move on to the last problem here, or second to last problem. 30-bit mask again. 
first host, last host, broadcast address, add one to the broadcast that gives us our next available network. 172.23.107.16 is our last network there. Let's find out what our broadcast address is here, which is going to be 172.23.107.19. So now we can apply all these network addresses that we've created to all of our host requirements. We have not exceeded the range of addresses that we can use because 172.23.96.0 slash 20 goes much higher than our last address, which was 172.23.107.19. So this wraps up variable length subnet masking. I hope you enjoyed the video and didn't hurt yourself watching them or doing the exercises, and I hope I have helped make you a variable length subnet masking expert. I look forward to seeing you in future train signal videos. Thank you.